good scooter, everybody. It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Most of you guys know I grew up uh, majorly in Sacramento and uh, part of my life in Los Angeles. I'm originally from Los Angeles. But something happened in 1999. In 1989, I was a graduating senior. I'm in high school. And at this particular time, I had uh, some of my buddies who were not into the right thing. At that time, I think we only had maybe 10 guys, African-American guys that went on to college. And um, although I didn't go directly into the university, I matriculated into American River Junior College. So now at that time, um, the drug game was still quite popular. Um, you know, late 90s, 2000s, crack was still moving. Not like it was moving in the early 90s and the late 80s, but it was still doing something, right? You still had a few base heads. And even now, I believe there are still folks that's, you know, participating in the drug trade. So some of my friends decided to, because California was just getting too competitive, in the 80s, you know, you had guys coming from L.A. to Sacramento, um, the Bay Area, you just couldn't go there. Um, like, nobody from Sacramento whatever goes to the Bay, they kill you. You know what I mean? Just like Crips and Bloods didn't go to the Bay, they kill you also. So what guys started doing, there was two places that you saw a lot of brothers going. One was Salt Lake City, and two was Reno. Um, drugs was just going for a lot more money over there. Some dudes went to Atlanta because Atlanta had different connections and different networks, and a lot of brothers was reestablishing themselves. But they was going into those places, and I saw a lot of guys coming back with a lot of money. And, um, you know, dudes had shopping bags and, you know, buying all kind of stuff. And so, you know, um, it, could, it could wane on you, especially when you're working at KFC or things like that, right? You don't have a lot of money, but. But one thing I knew is that if you if if you if you sold drugs, two things will happen to you. You was gonna go to jail or get killed. Or go to jail first and then get killed later. And so as time went on, I started to see a lot of the, my friends, man, they was dropping like flies. They was either getting killed or they was going to jail. And so that taught me real quick that fast money don't make no money, right? If it's quick, it ain't worth it. And so I decided right there in my life that if I was going to be rich, I was going to work, I was going to do it the honest way. And I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I was going to do it for myself such that wouldn't nobody be able to take it from me because I got it illegally. Now, this guy, Omi in the Hellcat, is a little different. He didn't sell drugs, but Omi in the Hellcat did something that was completely legal, which was basically piracing um, cable networks, TV networks, all for the hopes of being rich. All right? The guy didn't want to work, in my honest opinion. What he was doing was wrong. And he wanted to be able to prove himself, you know, buying all these lavish things, Lamborghinis, McLarens, you know, you did all this stupid stuff to show off to a whole bunch of people that didn't know him. And he's dumb because he, he pretty much put it out there and made their job easier, right? So he got sentenced to five and a half years in prison. 62 count federal indictment all right now i want you to basically hear what he had to say after getting uh convicted and then i'll come back tell me what happened yesterday um, um yeah the, the, the fbi came in for the first time you know the first time you guys came here everybody said that it was bull crap right so just tell me what happened nothing they just came in they just they, they ran straight up to the ring and they put a blue tape on the ring so we couldn't see but Obviously, there's about 30 cameras around the whole premises. So they came back for the things that they alleged that I did, the, cop, the copyright infringement, which, you know, I don't think I ever did anything wrong. Obviously, I was running businesses wide open in, in the public. So now we just got to see 
we have gonna have our day in court now. So finally, you know, I get to not be depressed, not be stressed out anymore. Now I get my day in court. Was this, was this arrest a relief for you? It was a hundred percent a relief because I didn't know what was you know, what was going on for two years. No answers, no nothing. You know, depressed. You know, a lot of depression comes behind this. They don't know, man. When when they do things like this, they take people's livelihoods. You know, so this is sort of a big relief for me. Obviously. You look like you're doing pretty good. <laughs> oh, and look, they said that everything that I've done was criminally. And back again, we're back to flourishing again with other business ventures, which means that, you know, I've always done something right. You know, I just feel like, you know, I found a loophole. I ran through it and I did great. You know, there's other colleagues of mine that are in the same business that I was in. They never got in trouble with the FBI. They're right now, you know, they're getting sued by direct TV. And the FBI never had any interest in them. And, you know, that's my question to them. Like, how can my colleagues get to run off of two, three hundred million? And I was the only one targeted out of it. Maybe it's because, you know, we were probably driving down the 95 and um, they looked over, you know, they make 70 grand a year. Who the hell is this fat guy driving a Lambo? You said two things in a video. Mm -hmm. You said you're prepared to go to jail. Is that still the case? If, 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 if. Uh, the jurors could find that I did anything wrong because I believe I, I see counsel in this matter and I actually sat in one of my divorce proceedings and I sat there and told my lawyer am I doing anything wrong because if I am I'll quit down he looked at me in my face in front of my ex-wife and said Omar what you're doing is not illegal so in my heart and what I felt that I was doing was illegal no you know I, this was wide open I, I've never hit anything that I've ever done you know it's, it's kind of it kind of sucks Second thing you said in one of your videos, you, you always make money. Uh, what's next for you? Um, opening the biggest brand in the world right now, you know, ReloadedMerch.com. And we're doing fantastic. We have a great group of people to follow us, you know. And I've always been an advocate of positivity. You know, I've never, you, you'll never see me advocating anything other than positivity. So, you know, what happens is supposed to happen. And, you know, God bless everyone. So just to be crystal clear, mm -hmm. the indictment that came down today... You're saying you're completely innocent of those? Um, not completely innocent would be a, a, a false statement. Now, ignorance is no excuse for the law. You know, um, I, I try to go back and forth with a few accountants. And, you know, I found that when they were trying to, like, you know, file my taxes, they were filing them wrong. You know, should I have done a little faster? Of course, 100%. But do I think that I, that I blatantly just ran away from the law and, and tried to evade and try to money? None of that stuff I've ever done, you know? But ignorance is no excuse for the law, you know, so maybe I should have got on, on, those, on those things a lot faster. But at the end of the day, what I think what I've done, I never did anything wrong. Finally, what do you want to say to all your hundreds of thousands of followers now? Uh, you know, hold tight. And, you know, and, and any entrepreneur that's doing anything right now, this, this can be you. If you think you're doing the right thing and obviously you're on a great, you know, just always check, check with a good lawyer, maybe two or three of them. <laughs> That's all I had, you know. So guys, <clears throat> let me just say this. When you look at guys like this, guys who want to be rich. See, this guy is um again, I when I see most crooks or frauds, guys like this, I, I realize the only reason why you wanted to be rich was to buy these things that you never really wanted to work for. It always involves a scam. You know what I'm saying? So people who want to be rich to buy luxury items will never keep it. Drug dealers, robbers, scammers, those guys have a short lifetime. But those people who want to be rich based on adding value to something, like let, let's talk about Elon Musk. Elon Musk is rich based on ingenuity. Based on innovating in a market or in the industry. Look at Tesla. Look at his work at PayPal. All right? He actually adds value to what's there. And you, the guy works really hard. You look at Steve Jobs, the Pixar or Apple. These are people who get rich because they believe in the technology. They believe in the industry. And they want to innovate it. And the result of that is money. That's why this guy will never have much as much money as like somebody like Bill Gates. But when you're stupid and you want to be rich just so you can floss, hey, man, then people coming to get you. Now, you're about to be in the penitentiary for five and a half years. 
You're going to lose everything you got, just like you got drug dealers out there. I know some of them, you know, brothers go ahead and do their thing, and they sell drugs, get all that money, and then the feds come knocking on your door, then they take all your stuff. When you lose 10, 15 years of your life, what's the point of that? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of guys got to understand it. In today's world, there's so much money out there. You can't count it as long as you want to work. You know what I'm saying? As long as you want to work. If you want to work, get to the money. Get to the money. But now, y'all don't want to work. I mean, not y'all, but y'all, but some of us don't want to work, man. And it don't make no sense. Because you're going to ruin your life over a few dollars. Had you worked in the industry, knew how to innovate it, you would have found something else. Now you out. And a lot of times, it ain't about what you make, it's what you spend. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Server Junk. Appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out. <laughs>